Hello and welcome back. We're here at Virtual Spring Q in glorious Paso Robles, California, connected with uh, the east coast of Canada, um, the fabulous Sylvia Duckworth, one of the, I would say, worldwide renowned proponents of the sketchnoting phenomena. And I'd like to, um, I'd like to start up with sharing uh, the idea that um, one of the things I, I like about sketchnoting, Sylvia, just to kind of set you up, is that um, the, uh, if you look at the Robert Marzano top 10 skills in education, uh, one of them is non-linguistic representation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Another top 10 skill is note taking. And just mm -hmm. to kind of put this in context for folks as we start up is that um, non-linguistic representation, creating your own visual metaphors and devices is a very higher order skill. And as an English teacher, metaphor is one of the most important skills to teach. Mm -hmm. The other piece is note taking. And unfortunately in education, a lot of times what we do is we equate note taking, note -taking with, I'm going to write things on the board and make sure that you guys copy it down exactly. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. I love about sketch noting is it takes two of these Marzano top 10 things that both show like 40 points of growth when applied well. Um, and they combine them into one super open-ended, everybody can access, uh, minimal amount of skills, uh, using your own private language. And that to me is the magic of sketch noting. So mm -hmm. welcome Sylvia. And I'm gonna kind of give the mic over to you at this point because it's your session. We're looking forward to just a really neat hour of discussion with you and sharing. Okay, what a great introduction, John. It sounds like you really understand sketch noting. Should I screen share at this point? Yeah, I think let's go ahead and get those slides up there. That sounds okay. great. Okay, all right. And there they so are. let me just go into present mode. And just tell me if you can see this. And am I coming in okay? My volume is okay? Yeah, I think everything awesome. sounds super. Slides look great. Great. Okay, so welcome everyone to my sketch noting session. The link to the slide deck will be available at the end of the session. I wanna keep some surprises in it, but you will get a link to it at the end. I'm so sorry, I, I, this is not a chance to meet face to face in Palm Springs, um, so disappointing on so many different levels, but I wanna applaud John and Pam and everyone else on the Spring Q team for pulling this together and, and making it a virtual conference, which is the first time I've been a part of anything like this, and I can't believe that they did it in such a short time. So thank you, John, so much, and your team for, for organizing this. I'm thrilled to be able to connect with you online in this way, and I'm actually coming from Toronto, Canada right now. And we're struggling with the same issues you guys are dealing with. And so it's a really anxious time for all of us. But for the next hour or so, maybe 45 minutes, we're going to be de-stressing. We're going to be actually drawing, which is the next slide. So and this slide is not showing. So let me just, uh, just go into um, this mode here. Um, the mo the, what I want to show you the next slide is that we are going to be drawing today. So if you could go ahead and get your drawing tools ready. I have mine that ready. Slide. Yeah, good. Um, now, whether you're gonna be drawing in an analog fashion on pen and paper, or if you're gonna do it in a digital fashion, it really doesn't matter, but we are definitely gonna be drawing today. This is not a um, watch me while I draw, or this is not a, I'm gonna go through slides on how to sketch note. This is, we're gonna be doing hands-on um, drawing because the thing that I find the biggest hurdle for beginner sketch notes to get over is um, the idea that they can't draw. And I'm gonna address this. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but uh, I just wanna well, tell Sylvia, you- Sylvia, I can jump in yes, for that for a second for while, you're, sure. while you're getting your slides ready. Um, as a film yeah. teacher, there's a, I've, I've taught film for over a decade, and, and there's the same kind of thing um, that people say, I can't draw. It's very similar where um, with the film students. They go out and shoot a bunch of video, and then they, they kind of pause, and they're like, I'm, I'm not sure what to do. So mm -hmm. as a film teacher, what I brought into that was just the idea that, hey, take your footage, look through for cool shots, and make, um, make the, the opening credits. Mm -hmm. Because the, the structure on opening credits is so much lower the need to succeed on that is so much lower. So what would happen is kids start finding a couple shots and as they get those shots, 
their storyline starts to happen, right? Right. And I think right. it's very so, similar to what you're going to talk about. Yeah, it's just a matter of, of, of doing it to gain your confidence. Mm -hmm. A little bit of background on, on what I've done in the past. I have been a teacher for more than 32 years in the elementary division, and I've been teaching French and technology, but because I'm in Canada, we have two official languages, English and French, and so there are a lot of French teachers up here. And uh, I retired a couple of years ago, and now I tour the world doing um, sketchnote workshops for educators and for students and for administrators and for, um, for parents. And uh, it's really nice to have the, the time to be able to do that now that I'm retired full time. I've written two books. The first one was Sketch Notes for Educators, which is just a collection of 100 of my favorite sketch notes. And the second one is How to Sketch Note, which is a more recent publication. And this is really, um, well, you know, if you stick around, if you come back to, if you do this session, you come back to my next two sessions uh, with this conference. Um, I will cover a lot that's in that book, but you can also order these books online. So it's a little bit about myself. And just to start off with, you know, there may be some people out there who really don't know what sketchnoting is. And so this is an example of a sketchnote, and I call this a selfie sketchnote. And I actually, um, I, I think it's a good idea to try one of these yourself. You might even want to try it with your kids at home right now. And and um, basically what you do is you put yourself in the middle and you talk about the things that are important to you. Uh, so here's my selfie sketch note. Hi, my name is Sylvia and here are some of the things that I love. I'm gonna start on the right hand side. I love my family. I love to cycle and walk. I love bright colors. I love to travel and to learn from others. I love my city, Toronto, and I love to sketch note on my iPad. So a sketch note is basically drawing plus text. So when you're combining the drawing with the text, you are creating a sketch note. And it's really that simple. I'm doing so again, one right gonna, now. I'll oh, show amazing. you in a sec. Okay. So I'm going to have to exit here again because my... Yeah, just my, do that. Um, stay, stay with that yeah. mode. That works great. Yeah. Unfortunately, the picture's not even showing up, which is unfortunate. But let me see if I can pull it up some other way because I have it on my, my desktop, fortunately. And I really oh, want to show you this. This is uh, something that a teacher shared with me um, just recently, and I'm not being able to access it that way either. So that's not um, successful. So let me just go back here. Um, it's, uh, I don't know why you can see it sort of a little bit there, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if I could just zoom in there. So it's a sketch note on COVID-19. <laughs> um, and so she teaches in Ottawa, and her name is Catherine DeBolt. And she had her grade four or five students um, sketch note about COVID and the, wow. um, the way to stay safe and some of the misconceptions about it and um, what it is exactly. And so I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, students can use sketch notes in every single area um, from French to math to English um, from all grade levels from kindergarten all the way up to um, high school and beyond and I want to point out this teacher Adam Juarez who's a friend of mine and he has his students he teaches he's a tech coach in high school um, grade 7 all the way up to grade 12 in California and he's put together this amazing collection of his students sketch notes from grade 7 all the way up to grade 12 and if you check out that link and remember you will be getting a link to the slide deck at the end of the hour so you don't have to write anything down um, but he has collected these sketch notes from all different subject areas all different grades and you can click under the grade that you teach and then um, a drop down menu will appear on like math and, and language arts and um, social studies and all kinds of things where you can get examples of his students' sketch notes. So okay, that's so a, um, my sketch note is ready. I'm going to share it on what? my screen here. Yeah, I already made it. I took nine years of art, sister. I can draw. Wow. Um, and here's a fun little trivia note uh, at Tech Coach Juarez. I've known him since he was in diapers. When I played football at Fresno Get State, out. his dad was the manager and he would run around in diapers and we lost each other for approximately you know, 30 years and just reconnected about three years ago. And then here's my sketch note. 
Let me see. Okay. James, can you hold this up to the camera? Oh, it's James going to zoom in. So, uh, uh, zoom, buddy. There you go. Zoom, zoom. So that's this is my little uh, cap chaos. That's my uh, my uh, avatar, and I love my family. I got my my wife. Look how beautiful she is, and my son and two daughters. I love education. Three R's and a T for tech. I love edu te uh, ed tech, and I love edu meat. That's our barbecue group of wow. educators. So, John, you have it doesn't have to be good, right? Because I'm just sharing exactly what I like. Adam is, is going to now give me a bad time on Twitter that he can draw better than me. That's okay. I can live with no, that. It's not, a, no. it's not a how good I draw thing. It's, it's my it's feelings. N it's not about the drawing at all. <laughs> it's about getting your thoughts down in a visual way. And I, I, it looked amazing to me, John. <laughs> but that's a really funny anecdote about Adam. Isn't that funny? And yeah, then I actually, um, I was the, uh, I was the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, officiant at his wedding to Catherine Goyette, who no I accidentally was on their first date. It's a long story, but uh, oh. we'll keep going with the sketch note. <laughs> They're a wonderful couple. <laughs> All right. So then why sketch note? There's many reasons to sketch note. I'm just going to narrow it down to three main ones. Number one, sketch noting helps you remember things, helps you organize your thoughts, and helps you take notes in a creative way. Mm -hmm. And again, bizarrely... I would just stay with that action. mode right there, Sylvia. Yeah, let's just stay right there. Okay, and maybe what I'll do is I'll go into full present mode there. Oh, there you, you go, still that's can't perfect. See them, but anyway. Um, yeah, why isn't this working? Not this sure. is so weird. I would just so, hit escape. It doesn't like that full screen mode. Yeah, it doesn't like that at all. So let me just, just hit your escape try. button. Yep, just go like this. And, and we'll go from there. Okay, so you can see the slides sort of on the side, can't you? Yep. You know what, maybe just let me zoom in this way. Okay, so uh, those are the three main ideas on why to sketch note, but there's also some psycho-emotional reasons to mm -hmm. sketch note. And Sunny Brown is a well-known sketch noter in the States, and she claims that, um, and I agree with her, that it can take you from a really frazzled, kind of anxious state to a more calm one and a more focused one. And um, I notice that when I sketch note, it really calms me down. And I don't know, I, I used to teach in a boys only school and these boys used to come in after recess, like bouncing off the walls and I would turn on some music and we'd start drawing or we'd start sketch noting and it calms everyone right down. It gives them a chance to be creative as well. So um, I have a link here. It goes to a uh, Google doc with lots of sketch note resources on people to follow, YouTube channels, um, Instagram accounts, um, studies on, on that support drawing and sketchnoting in class, uh, like tons and tons of resources there that you're going to have access to um, once you get the link to the slide deck. And this is something I want to really address now because this is the main thing that holds people back from trying sketchnoting is the belief that I'm not an artist and I can't draw. And um, I really want to underline the fact that it's not about the art. It's about mm -hmm. um, the capturing ideas and putting them on paper. And you don't, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. There are so many advantages to taking notes in a visual way. Um, and you don't have to share them with anyone else. And um, you just keep them to yourself. But um, it's something that I, I really want people to try and hopefully by the end of the session today if you're new to sketch no you'll be convinced that you can actually do it but one of the basic rules the main rules in sketch noting is to keep it simple so you can see that on the left you have a sketch of a sheep and I would have a hard a really hard time doing that myself but if you look on the right that is a sketch note of a sheep and I think most people can probably agree that they could probably draw a sheep like that um, and so this basic rule of thumb in sketch noting is you don't want to spend more than 20 seconds drawing your icons. Mm -hmm. um, if you're spending more time than that, then you're spending too much time on the drawing itself. So that's uh, the rule. Right, of because we're not drawing drawing. a French pastoral countryside. We're not drawing a tableau. We're just creating a visual metaphor or analog for the thing that mm -hmm. we want to describe, right? So, exactly. I mean, in that sense, it's almost like um, a really simple form of graffiti. What's the concept that I want me or somebody else? Yeah, and you just want to cap capture the essence of mm -hmm. whatever it is. Love you're that word, to, the essence. Yeah. 
So their icons is kind of the bread and butter to sketch noting. And um, the, the wonderful thing about sketch about icons is that they can be used to represent many different things. For example, mm -hmm. if you can draw a computer, you can use it to represent anything you do on a computer. So John, what are some of the things that you do on a computer? I watch Netflix. That's a super yeah. easy sketch note. It's an Absolutely. N. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. What uh, else do you do on a computer? I buy things on Amazon. I don't want to talk about mm -hmm. that if my wife's watching. But yes, uh, and I could have a Amazon with a little arrow under it, right? Because I'm. You could. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It just has to make people go, "Oh, that's Amazon." Yeah. So uh, communicating, right? Um, digital uh, citizenship, anything having to do with technology or entertainment, anything you do on a computer, if you can draw a computer, you can use a computer to represent all mm -hmm. those things. Um, what can a light bulb represent? Well, it could be an idea, or mm -hmm. if I'm in science class, it could literally be a light bulb because Absolutely. I might be, I might be doing, um, some wiring and some mm -hmm. uh, circuitry type of things. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a fun um, transition. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but my co-author from Edge of Protocols, Marlena Hebern, she created a lesson called Sketch and Tell. And mm -hmm. the discipline on that is you can't use Google Images at all. You have to draw just using the Google Drawing Tools. So the oh. idea is the kids can watch a little video and then draw using the line and arrow tools and curve tools right in, in um, in uh, Google Drawing or Google Slide, mm -hmm. it's very much in your in your track in terms of you know iconic and visual. It doesn't have to be accurate. It has to represent the idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the same as sketch noting because you're talking about a series of ideas over a given time where sketch and tell is a singular idea. But conceptually, mm. it's it's same place in the brain. It's relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's creative. You're smiling. There's almost mm -hmm. no wrong answer as long as you can explain it, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and that's the thing I notice in my workshops is that people are really enjoying themselves. Like they're smiling and they're yeah. laughing and they're giggling, and and it's sort of like um, a step back into childhood because they um, they I, I encourage them to try to rediscover their love of drawing because for some mm -hmm. reason we lose that growing up. Like. Yeah. It, and I, and I lost it myself when I was about 10 years old. I stopped drawing altogether and because I decided I wasn't very good at it. Right. And it wasn't until about um, seven years ago when I started sketchnoting when I realized, hey, I don't really need to know how to draw. I just need to know how to draw some really simple things and I can sketchnote. And so that's, wow. that's something that I always talk about. And I, well. I think you'll, again, love this. This is why this is such a personal thing to me and why you're such a hero of mine is that um, for me to echo what you're saying, you know, people are all like, oh, John, he's so fun and easygoing. That was not always the case for me in school. Mm -hmm. And I took art class all the way through high school every year. I took art class all the way through college because that was the one class where I could go and be and draw what I needed to be and draw. Mm. It was really an escape. And just this morning, I was on Facebook with my art teacher from high school. So that's 1982. Mm. And because of Facebook, social media shout out, we, we mm -hmm. reconnected about two years ago. And he was a guy that taught me one really big idea. And I think you're going to get really far into this in a little bit. He said, don't draw what you think you see. Draw what's mm. there. Don't, mm. Right? Draw what's there. Because, mm. And he used the example of draw eyeglasses. And everybody mm -hmm. drew the cliche of eyeglasses. And he goes, but that's not what's sitting in front of you, right? Mm. Draw what's there. And then mm. I love with Carol Dweck in her book, um, in the Mindset book, um, she shares um, a beautiful example of what art students could do on day one and day two. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sorry, day one and day five. And it's amazing. They go from basically stick figures to highly yeah. quality drawn um, uh, self-portraits. But this right. is the kicker, and I know you're going to love this if you haven't seen yeah. it. I didn't teach them how to draw. I taught them how to see. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And I think that applies for so many things in teaching, right? If you line yeah. up, I need to teach 200 standards. How about if I teach them to enjoy the content? Right, They'll self-discover right. a lot. So I'll be quiet again, but I just... Those things just oh. seem so relevant to this slide, and yeah, I just felt like no. my heart was so full and I wanted to share them. <laughs> oh, I love that segue. Thank you so much. So getting back to these icons, so a light bulb can represent all those things, John, but it can also represent like an aha moment mm -hmm. or creativity or innovation. Uh, and a rocket ship, what do you think a rocket ship could represent? Well, you know, we just had Ben Cogswell on, and I'm having, oh. I'm having big time uh, Ben Cogswell flashback right now, but a rocket ship can present unlimited potential. It can mm -hmm. present, uh, represent daring. It mm -hmm. can represent intelligence. 
Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's probably 20 or 30 really uh, straight ahead things that could represent very simply. And, and I can tell you're a visual thinker, John, because um, when I do this workshop for teachers, they struggle with what these things can represent, but you're not having a problem at all thinking in a visual way. And it's interesting because- Shouting out to Mr. Um, Packer right now. Mr. Packer, if you're out there. <laughs> when, I, when I do this workshop with students, they have no problem right. coming up with ideas, but, but um, we, we've lost that sense of creativity mm -hmm. as adults. And so it's harder for adults to think in a visual way. But, so we spend a lot of time in my workshops just de developing that visual vocabulary in that um, that visual um, literacy um, with, with these icons. So um, that, the other question when you're starting sketch knowing is um, how do I draw these icons and what are these essential icons that I need? So going back to this slide, I use these three icons in almost all of my sketch notes. And each time I use them, they might represent something different. Mm -hmm. And then I, I heard a TED talk by a, a sketch noter named Kate Hayward. And she said that you only need to know how to draw about 100 icons to tell any story in sketch notes. But what are those 100 icons? Mm -hmm. and it really depends on what you're using sketch notes for. Um, but Jen Giffen and I, Jen Giffen is a good friend of mine. I love Jen from, Giffen, yeah, virtual GIF, at, at yes. virtual GIF on the Twitters. <laughs> And uh, she was supposed to be a spring queue too. She's so disappointed too, that didn't work out. Um, but uh, we did a presentation at ISTE together last summer. And these are 100 of essential sketch on the icons that we use over and over again. So when you get the link to the slide deck, you will get the link to this slide deck. That's awesome. And you can uh, take a look at those and practice drawing those with your students. Your students can practice drawing them as well. But you know, like depending on what subject you teach, you're gonna come up with different mm -hmm. icons. Another friend of mine, Carrie Bauckham, has this wonderful idea of um, brainstorming icons that you're gonna need with your students. So if you're doing a unit on right. say um, the coronavirus, like what are the icons we're gonna need? Gotta need, to need a microscope right away, Sylvia. Gotta need a right. microscope. Exactly. I, so I'm let's need that let's, right now. <laughs> let's let's learn how to draw those. And then her other idea is to have a dedicated bulletin board in your classroom. Um, and mm -hmm. invite your students to draw icons oh. that can represent different things and right. put them on the and crowdsource on the bulletin it, right? Board. Crowdsource the icons. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, so a big shout out to Carrie Bach, who's also doing wonderful things with sketch noting. So make sure you follow her as well. Uh, she is at Heck Awesome on Twitter. That's a heck awesome Twitter handle right there. And I'm she okay is heck awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. So today we're going to be working on the basic elements of sketchnoting. And there are many different elements of sketchnoting. So there's different fonts, banners, frames, bullets and dividers, faces and hair, people, icons, and animals. There's actually more than this. This is all I can fit on one, on one slide. And we're going to be working on these today. Now, when you get the link to the slide deck, you'll also notice at the bottom, you will get the link to this um, this image that you can download and you can print out if you get back to class. And how much does that cost, Sylvia? What do you charge people for this? This is free. Um, so it's kind of like a cheat sheet that your students can have and put in their binders okay. or keep in their desks on when they start sketch noting, they can refer to this. And we're actually going to be working on how to draw these elements today. Nice. So we are, yeah, right at this point, we are going to start drawing. So I hope everyone can get out their drawing tools. And I'm going to get my... Um, if you uh, click on view and, and hit, it hides speaker notes, that'll give you a little more screen space too uh, in your Google Slides. Just, I wouldn't do full screen. That's not going to go well. That's no. I'm just going to go... Well, I'm trying to find my... I'm just going to go like this. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find my oh you're sketching quick time. It. Find my your quick time yeah right there. this is going to be fun okay it's right here okay I'm going to full mode here all right so as you, you guys can see all my notifications here and I <laughs> thought I you know what I turned them off on my MacBook John and I forgot to turn them off on my iPad I don't so think we saw anything important <laughs> lots of canceled flights let's yeah. just put it that yeah. way that's helping nobody <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to start off by doing, um, having fun with fonts. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing sketch noting, you don't actually need to have a huge repertoire of fonts. I really only use two or three fonts when I'm sketch noting. 
But let's just start off by doing a simple letter A. And if you want to make it a little fancier, you can just put these little sticks like that to make it a little bit fancier. And then I'm going to do a small letter A like that. And then just do these sticks like that. And I use this font a lot, like in all of my sketch notes. And you can see that okay, right, John? Everything's turning out okay. And now here's a B. Again, just adding those little sticks to make it a little fancier. And we'll do one more. We'll do a C with those sticks. And then another C. So that's one uh, type of font that I use a lot. Another really easy one is just to do the letter and then put a little dot on each segment. So let's do a Ooh. small D. That is super, super easy, but also very popular with primary people. Oh, absolutely. And Super easy, a super yeah. easy style points. And an easy way to make a font a little fancier. I like it. I really like the way that you've got this broken down into categories, Sylvia. I think having those like chapters is so helpful because it doesn't mean you have to be able to draw the whole world, right? You can just draw, here's your categories, thought bubbles, banners, animals, right? And really a mouse isn't that different than a cow. You just make it a little bigger and you add a couple other pieces. Exactly. <laughs> Love that. All right. So there's two of, um, we'll do one more letter in this font. Let's do an F. So we'll Ooh, F gets a lot of dots. F and a small letter F. I'm so glad you're joining us, John, that you're actually drawing with us. This is Are awesome. you kidding me right now? I'm drawing with, with Sylvia Duckworth. This is the best thing nice. ever. Okay, we're gonna move on to another font. And this is a great sketch noting font. This is where you just take each line and you do it three times. Oh, and this is yeah. a font where the messier, the better, actually. Yep. You, want it, you want it kind of messy. This is my favorite style, personally. It yeah. looks super cool and it's almost no talent. Exactly. That's what sketchnoting is all about, keeping it simple. Now James, I'm going to need a zoom in in a little bit. Not a rush, but be ready, man. So again, we're just doing three lines and we're keeping it intentionally messy. Yeah, swoopy, sketchy. Not, not yeah. Let your OCD go for this one, guys. Exactly. Just let us swing it around. Here, James, here's mine. You can zoom in and then we cut to it when it's full. There we go. So there's there's mine, Sylvia. I think you can oh, see those, right? Oh, amazing, John. So it's just it's just uh, it's just. But there's three clearly defined styles, right? There's the the thing with the thing, and there's the dots, and then there's the swoop. Yeah, amazing. All right, so those are three really basic fonts, and that's all I want to do with fonts today. Um, but when you get the link to the slide deck, you can take a look at that uh, basic elements of sketch noting and try some of the other fonts out there. Let's work on banners next. And so let's choose one of these fonts and just write your name. So I'm just going to go with the font that I So I'm used. just making sure I write my name first. Just write your name first. It's always important when you're doing banners to do and the I can text. choose any style. There's no wrong style. Exactly. There's no such thing as right or wrong in sketch noting. That's really important that everyone realizes that. I'm adding some little Van Halen wings to mine. Absolutely. Now, the reason why it's important to do the text first is because if you try to do the banner first, you may not be able to fit the text inside. That was the best so, thing I learned from Mr. Packer. You so don't draw the thought bubble first in cartoons. You draw the thing and then put the thought bubble exactly. around. It's always the right size. So we're doing the text first, and now we're going to draw a banner around it. So once you have your name, just draw a nice rectangle around it. Now you can do a rectangle that way, or if you like, you can just cut cut out some letters like that. It really doesn't matter. But again, do you see how messy it is? It's really, um, it's not perfect. I have the lines as a background to guide me, but I don't really need the lines at this point. But I really think the messier, the better in sketch noting. This is not, we're not going for Here's you know, mine. something perfect. Oh, Oh, what? You, what? You've already done the banner. 12 You're years ahead of heart. us. Thank you, You're Mr. Packer, once again. Pastor Robles High School, 1982. John's, John's got a nice curve in his banner. We're just going to stick to a straight one. So the next step is you want to go about two thirds of the way up on the left side and just do a straight line out. I love the way you say there, out. You, I just have to say that. And then you. I, I got to say it once and just get it out of the way. And then as 
You remind me of Jen Giffen. Oh, that, then, we are uh, two peas in a pod. That is for I sure. I can imagine you guys can get along really <laughs> you well. You cannot let us be in the same room for more than 30 minutes. And then uh, another diagonal this line, this way. And then a straight line across. And then a straight line up. And so uh, while you're doing that, I switched yeah. to a gel pen. I really like gel pens for sketch, nice. sketch noting. Like a regular nice. ballpoint, it can get funky, but gel pens are sweet. And I like the super skinny Sharpies too. Oh, fantastic. Now, um, I always draw on my iPad, so I don't really know what tool, tools <laughs> You always have the perfect for. tool then. I do, because I can change it whenever I want. And now the last thing you're going to do is just a little diagonal line like that. So now you've got a banner with a little bit more of a 3D effect. So let's try it on the other side. We're going to start off with two-thirds the way up with a straight line out. And then another diagonal down this way. Another diagonal this way, you're dropping below the bottom edge of the banner, all the way across, a little line up, and then a diagonal. So now you've got a banner. So that's a really basic banner that you can try. Um, I don't think we're gonna do any more banners either because that's the basic banner. Uh, again, you can take a look at the uh, slide before you can um, if you want to try some different banners because I want to move on to frames. So a frame is when you want to draw attention to something in your sketch note. And let's start off by doing something really easy. Let's just do a rectangle or a square. And then you can draw a string on top with a nail. And then you can put some important information in there. I love so the way easy. you named it, a string on top with a nail. I just like yeah. giving kids that verbiage while you're drawing. It's so, exactly. it's so comforting. Yeah. So that's a really easy container. We're going to do something a little fancier now. Just go ahead and draw a square or a rectangle. And this, I have to say, this is my favorite frame. And then we're going to do a little dot here and a little dot here, not quite to the end. Oh, can you scroll up for us? Scroll up. We're only seeing the bottom of it. Really? Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. So the top of my screen is two, cut off. That's two dots. Fabulous. Well, it wasn't a factor till then. Okay. And now we're going to do a line and a bump and a line. A line? Oh, I like that we put the dots to give us a sense of space before we drew the line. That was cool. And now we're going to do the same on each side. So we're going to put a little dot here and a little dot here. And then a line, a bump, and a line. Let's do the same on the bottom. A little dot here, a little dot here. A this line, is giving, this a, is looking kind of southwestern to me right line. now. Mm -hmm. And then on the left side, a dot here, a dot here. A line, a bump, and a line. So now the only thing we're missing are the corners. So on each corner, I'm going to do a little bump, a big bump, and a little bump. <gasps> I see what's happening. So a little bump, a big bump, and a little bump. Small, big, small, small, big, small. And then you've got a nice frame. And it looks super fancy, but it's just really the same thing four times. And again, the you know, if it looks messy, that's fine. It's, it's sketch noting. And the last frame we're going to do is a fun one. We're going to do a three-sided rectangle on the top and a three-sided rectangle on the bottom. So you've got an opening a on each side. Right, it's like a soccer a field right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you're going to do three little bumps here and three little bumps here. And if I'm teaching primary, I'm teaching numbers, right? Three bumps, four sides. Oh, yeah. And now you can do a little curve here and a little curve here. And now you can do a face on the top with some eyes and a mouth. You can add some ears and some hair. And then at the bottom, we're just going to do some legs. And that's another frame or container where you can put some important information there in your sketch notes. I'm ready for feedback. I love it. I love it, John. I didn't realize the three little dots were the fingers until the very end when you drew the head and I said it all makes sense. You know, something else uh, I've seen 
I'm just going to rub out this guy for a second, but here's another way of doing this is you can do a, a big nose guy like this. Oh yeah. Nobody knows um, who Kilroy is anymore. That's a World War II thing. <laughs> no, I don't know who Kilroy is. Oh, sorry. it's famous graffiti in World War II. Look up Kilroy when your Kilroy was here. Look that up later um, when you get a chance. You'll love it. <laughs> okay. American GIs We're... drew this face all over Europe during no World way. War II. No oh, yeah, way. I will, you will, love I will it. definitely check it out. So the next category is bullets and dividers. We're actually not going to do that. We're going to move right on to. Um, we're going to move right on to drawing some people. I'm having so much fun is, right now. I know it's and it's de-stressing, isn't it? You it's bet. Relaxing, yeah. I don't care what anybody else is doing right now. Sylvia and I are drawing. We're going to draw some people now. Okay. And um, I'm going to skip the faces part too. We're just going to go right on to drawing like people in different actions. So I will draw a basic person with a rectangle and a circle. Oh, that looks like one of those little uh, tiny tots people we play with when we're kids. Okay. And then the arms, very simple. And then the legs, very simple. So that is my basic person. So we're gonna do variations of this basic person. Now the first variation, so let's just do another rectangle and another circle. Let's go ahead and draw the legs. The legs are pretty well the same for all of my guys. But we're gonna change the arms a bit. So we're gonna have this arm like this with a hand on the hip. So already you've got a bit more attitude here. Let's put the other arm the same way. Let's do an elbow out mm. and a hand on the hip. This is kind of like Pam was talking about with Ben earlier, the nonverbal stuff. Exactly. Now, when you look at that, what, what do you think this person is feeling? I'm going to go positive. I think that they're deciding. How about that? I think yeah, other people may deciding. see something else, but I'm going to go with they're thinking, they're deciding. Like, hmm. Hmm. So then you can, you can make it more clear. You could go like this with a thought bubble and mm -hmm. like, hmm. And remember, we draw hmm first and then make the thought bubble, right? <laughs> right. You know what, so uh, this, this character is reminding me though, if you haven't seen the Justin Timberlake uh, uh, this Saturday Night Live uh, episode where he does soup, there it is. Just look that up if you want to laugh. Okay, <laughs> I will. <laughs> well, you've got lots of homework for me today. <laughs> um, let's do another guy. Let's do another rectangle and circle. You notice I'm, I'm not seeing even patterns, drawing. yeah. We're just working I'm in the pattern. E yeah, I'm not even drawing a face. Mm -mm. So let's, let's do some legs. And let's put one hand on the hip. And the other hand, let's just do a V for the arm. Now it's John Travolta. Uh, no, he's not quite dancing. We could, oh. we would change the legs if he was dancing. But <laughs> oh, his hand so is, close. his hand is out like that. His hand is out flat. Oh yeah. And what do you think? What do you think this person is doing or saying? Well, okay. So for me, the thing that jumps out is I am going to tell you about something. Like I'm going to reveal something. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Or, Yes. So maybe, or maybe he's just talking, but John, there is no right or wrong no, answer here. No. It can be anything you want it to be. But I, I do this guy when I want to show two people having a conversation. Mm -hmm. So he's just conversing. Uh, let's do another variation. Let's do another rectangle and circle. And let's have the hand on the hip again. Let's draw some legs. time we're going to have his hand straight up in the air like that oh yeah oh yeah I see where you're going with this and what is this person saying or well thinking? they would uh for me they'd be they're making some kind of proclamation but mm -hmm. i also love because i'm california and our state motto is eureka mm. well it could be any one of those things i know the thing be. So that exactly like I know or an aha moment or right. listen to me. I have something important I want to say or look up, look in the sky. What right. Is and it? that could be I figured out how to do this math thing and here's my drawing of it. Or it could be okay. I just realized that this is a metaphor and I'm so right. excited. Right. Let's try another guy. So it's amazing, isn't it? How much you can express with these simple figures. 
Um, let's do his legs. And Sylvia, make sure you zoom mm -hmm. back a little bit for us. Like this, is that good? A little bit more. Like that? That's beautiful, yeah. Okay. The thing is when I draw, I really Oh, that's zoom. okay, yeah. It's okay and if it zooms in so while then you're I'll drawing, zoom out. pop back okay. out when you're... Okay. Doing, oh, we'll do one of these. Look, Sylvia's got an idea. So uh, this time we're gonna have the elbows, both of the elbows are down like that. And now we're gonna have his hands like this. And what do you think this person is? This is my of? daughter asking for allowance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, Dad. What's yeah, the deal? I, I don't get it. How, how so could they, this be? So you could do like question marks like that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a choice. Like maybe he's going, I don't know. Do I want this? Or, or do this? I want this? Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Let's do one more. Let's do a. Um, rectangle and a circle and we're going to do the legs let's put one hand on the hip and the other hand is going to be touching his head just like that so just do an oval next to his head and then we're going to draw a line from the shoulder down to the elbow and up so what do you think is going on here that means i'm stuck I'm stuck. Right. I don't know what to draw next. Right. So you can do a like um, you can do like eyes like that because like I don't know what I'm doing or you can just have another question mark or maybe he's just thinking and you can, can do you, that with thinking. Can you scroll down for us? We're seeing him. Oh, sorry. Just the, the, the top. Sorry. There you go. Yep. Um, or you can maybe, maybe he's listening to someone. Oh yeah. Or maybe, maybe he's on a cell phone. You just add pieces and you can totally right. change the context. Exactly. Okay, let's get someone walking. So let's do another rectangle and another circle. And um, let's do some legs first. So legs, we're just gonna go like this. One, two, can you see that okay? Yep. And the arms, I'm just going to have an elbow down like that. And then just scroll so we can see the head. Okay, yeah. There you go. And then in the back, just one arm at the back that's swinging mm -hmm. to the back like that. So that's walking. And we'll do the last person. And this guy is running. So because he's running, he's going to be tilted slightly to the side. You see that okay, John? It's great. Yep. And then from there, we're going to have the front arm, just like we did for the walking. And the back arm comes back. But the I back see this arm coming. Is gonna, but the back arm is going to actually be bent a yep. bit. Yep. Give it a little bit more motion. And the knee is going to come up high, because your coaches are always saying knees high when you're running. And then the back leg, you can just stretch it out like that. And because he's running, you can add, like, these kind of movements to show that it's going really fast. I'm a fan of the jaggedy legs right there. Like, blah, 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 blah. there might be four legs because he's <laughs> the road runner. Can I show you? Oh, you're having so much fun with this, John. Can I show you one one more thing well, to yeah. draw with people? Okay. I want to show you how we can draw friends. So let's draw two guys standing next to each other closely. So two rectangles and two circles. And they're crossing arms, so you can go like this to show that they're crossing arms. And Sylvia, we have some yep. artists on the internet asking, what app are we using right now? What are you, oh, I'm using we know you're drawing Pro our iPad. I'm using Procreate. Procreate. Procreate, yes, yeah, one word. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great app. There's lots of features to it, but it does cost money. But there's lots of free apps out there, which are fabulous as well. So maybe I will add that to the slide deck. I'll add um, a list yeah. of my favorite apps to draw with. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'll just, just keep drawing for a second. I would like to mention that if, if your district has um, touchscreen Chromebooks, oh yes, it's on, you guys. You can use all kinds of little web tools to draw and then screenshot. And then um, if you use the curve line tool in Google Slides and drawing, you can, you can add curvy lines. Yeah, and I can also include on the slide deck. That, that it's not on the slide deck now, but I'll add them after. Okay. Um, the apps that I recommend for drawing on a touchscreen Chromebook as well. There's some awesome. great great choices. 
Um, and then from there, we're just going to do the legs. And then zoom out so we can see the heads too. Yep. There we go. And then the arms, we're going to have this guy's arm is going to be here on his hip. Oh, I see what you're doing. This guy's arm is just going to go straight down, but there's more. So this guy on the left, his hand is right here on his friend's waist. And then the guy on the right, his arm, his hand is resting on the other guy's shoulder. Gotcha. So it's, it's kind of hard. It might be hard to tell what's going on here, but if I were to add some color to it, this is the green. Oops, didn't want to do that. This is the green guy. This is his arm here. Uh, so the color will differentiate where they overlap. Yes. And then the pink guy. This is the pink guy. This is. And again, I'm just, I'm channeling my coach Ben right now, but what a great way to teach primary kids colors. Draw your mm. friend like this. Now we need to give each one of your friends a different color. Today we're going to do orange and blue. And then that way yeah. the kids are learning this thing, but they don't have to do a worksheet. You don't have to do a lecture. You don't need cards. We're just yep. going to learn it by doing it. And guess what? If you have a kid who's orange and pink, because maybe I'm colorblind, we'll figure it out tomorrow. But we got orange, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Because I am colorblind. Right. So I'm sensitive to that. So I, I hope that um, people now, when they say, I, you know, I can't draw people, I hope I've just proven that how easy it is to draw people. Like you can add faces, you can add expressions, but that's basically how you draw people. Yeah. But we're going to move on now to drawing some basic icons. So I showed you at the beginning three icons that I use over and over again. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and draw those icons. The first one we're going to draw is a computer. So and just remember to, on our screen, yep. Sylvia, that top yep. that top quarter is it's cut the off. very tippy top. So just keep that in mind. In How's that? That's Can beautiful. you see that? Yeah, that's okay. perfect. So we're going to draw a computer. Now, you don't have to draw a computer this way. You can draw a computer however you want. I can't draw all those ports, Sylvia. I don't know the difference between USB, A, and C. So how do, I, how do you help me with that? We're not going to draw ports. We're keeping <laughs> okay, it really good. basic. <laughs> so then we're just going to draw another square around that square. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we're going to draw two diagonal lines that go out and join them together and then draw a little rectangle at the bottom and then the keyboard is just going to be some lines straight across mm -hmm. and some lines down so, so really it's just mm -hmm. two frames with some railroad tracks down the middle exactly and that computer you can use in so many of your sketch notes to represent so many different things let's draw a light bulb now you can draw a light bulb in many different ways this is the way i draw a light bulb i start off by going Three bumps on one side, three bumps on the other side. Join the bumps. We're going to do a nice round shape like that. I call that a hoop de doo That's my official term. It's a hoop de doo Well, here, here's another hoop de doo for the filament. That's the beauty of hoop de doo It's always the right shape. <laughs> and then just two or three diagonal lines at the bottom. And then you want to... You gotta light it up. Yeah, you gotta light it up. There we go. Nice. So those are two icons I use a lot. Um, this other icon I think is gonna blow you away, John. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. All right, so here we go. Draw four small circles in a diagonal. I'm doing this one, James. Get ready to video this. This is gonna be... We should have had a camera mounted above my machine. That would have been mm -hmm. so awesome. I could have had a, 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 a dock cam hooked up. Okay, I, don't, I have no okay. idea what this is right now. It looks like okay. pearls, maybe. So now you're going to draw a little curvy line like this. Okay, it's coming. All right. And an, another curvy line right next to it. Okay, dokie. Another curvy line next to that. Now it's starting to look like a bear claw Danish. Mm. Um, now the last curvy line is going to be a little bit longer. Okay. And then we're going to do a big curvy line like this. Okay. What's it looking like? I still see a bear claw Danish. Okay, <laughs> but well, maybe it's because it's lunchtime. Yeah. You're kind of on the right track when you say claw. Let's do a line <gasps> here. I think I might know. I can't see the top line. Oh, you can't. Okay. How's that? All right. Good. You see it now? Mm -hmm. I'll draw it again. A line here. Okay. And a line here. And then a rectangle and a dot. 
Melissa. I see it. Al I'm not going to say what it is. Other people can guess. And a line here. Mm -hmm. That Another was fun. Another rectangle and a dot. And so, John, what can a handshake represent? Oh my gosh. Nice. Uh, it can be a merging of ideas. It can be mm -hmm. a merging of cultures. It can mm -hmm. be a merging of personas. Um, mm -hmm. It could be a business uh, oh, deal. It could be literally dozens of things. That, wow, uh, that was so, great how you walked us through that, though. You're so good at this. You know, I avoided drawing a handshake for five years mm -hmm. of sketchnoting until someone showed me how to draw a handshake this way. And now I use it all the time because it can represent so many different things. Friendship, dignity, respect, empowerment, um, collaboration. Um, so those are a couple of uh, key icons. Now we're going to close off by drawing some animals. John? Oh, someone is joining us yep. there. Who's that? We have people jumping in for the next session. We got about a oh. nine minute countdown. So if you're okay. joining in, just mute your video and we are ready to pick you up okay. with Crystal in a few minutes. Let's draw. Um, hmm. We're going to continue this game, John. Okay. And see if you can figure out what we're drawing. Isn't there a Google thing like this too, where it's quick draw or auto draw? Oh yeah, quick draws. Google oh, is fantastic. Oh, that's fun. That's it's a fun. It's so that, much fun. It's a great. What I like about the quick draw game is that it it the time limit removes your ability to overthink it. You got to put something in. Yeah. And and, and then it gives you feedback. And it's twenty seconds. Right. Which is is exactly what is recommended for sketch noting when you're drawing in sketch notes you don't want to spend that. more than 20 seconds so um i love that site and i recommend it a lot in my so workshops i will say it again more slowly if somebody didn't yeah. catch that it's google quick draw if you just literally google google quick draw it opens up and you just start playing and mm -hmm. if i was going to do that in class i might do google quick draw tournaments to get going every morning mm -hmm. have three rounds sketch note your best we'll talk about them we move on what grade level is that mm -hmm. sylvia mm -hmm. that's that's right on through adult level Mm -hmm. Yeah, tricky to use that side if you don't have a touch screen or if you don't have right. a mouse, right? It's hard. It would be hard to do it otherwise, but um, it's a great website. All right, we're going to move on to some basic animals. So just draw a line straight across and then draw a curve underneath it. Soup and you can bowl. Draw another curve. It does look like a soup bowl, not quite. I know it's coming. And then a head. What is a, it, John? I need a beak now, I think. I think I need yeah, a beak. Yeah, there's a beak. And now is a chicken. Is it a chicken or a bluebird? It, it could be any, any kind Doesn't of Doesn't matter. Bird. <laughs> now let's draw a tail. I just do two triangles and then the legs. Another book that I think um, we've talked about that people could check out is Ed, 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 Ed Emberley's sketching. Oh, he has wonderful oh, books on how to draw. He is the Yoda of this. Yeah, yeah, he's But amazing. what you bring to it is you bring to, how do I use this in the classroom? And that's what mm -hmm. I think the special twist you bring. So what could a bird represent in a sketch note? Oh my gosh, freedom, love, mm -hmm. harmony, um, yep. opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a partridge, doesn't it, isn't it equate to wealth? Does that sound right? Yeah. Or, or, uh, or not riches, but you know, b abundance. That's what I was looking for, abundance. As some music notes, and you've got uh, singing. Everybody can do music notes. Yeah. That's probably a good place, too, to talk about just the idea that if you can do a music note, you can draw a person. You just add a square to it and a little circle exactly. for the head. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's do another line, just like we did last time. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to do a curve. But we're going to have a little break in the curve like that. Okay. Now we're going to draw that. Oh, let's see what's happening. Now we're going to draw that. And we're going to draw that. And then an eye and a mouth and some teeth. And it's a Maybe friendly that. shark. We got a friendly shark. But really, yeah. what we have is a soup bowl, a half moon, and a couple sharks, uh, shark fins, and we're up. And what can a shark represent? Hmm. It can re, re uh, it can re represent independence. See how I push the limits on that one a little bit? It could be representing a really independent, solitary lifestyle. Um, yeah. It could be threatening. Um, mm -hmm. Or it could represent change. Fish are friends, okay. not food. You are so good at this, John. <laughs> You're coming up with ideas I've never thought of. 
Uh, I would have thought of aggress aggression or a No, you drew a happy or... shark. That's a happy shark. Put a frowning that's face true. on him and tell me, that's, and then I will go true. again. <laughs> that's true. How about one more animal? Do we have time for one more animal? I think we have time for one more animal. Okay. So this time we're going to do a circle with two dots. And just keep drawing, Sylvia. Folks from yep. Crystal's class that are joining in, because Crystal's going to have an in-studio class, you guys just mute and enjoy drawing pigs with us, and you guys start up at three. We'll have a little transition. I love drawing pigs. They're the easiest. Everybody knows what that circle with two dots means. And what does a pig represent? Oh, friendliness, intelligence, mm -hmm. collaboration. Yep. I don't know okay. about collaboration. I was just rolling on that one. One of my favorite children's books is Poppleton. All you primary people, if you have not read Poppleton, get in there right now. That is a rad book. Um, what if you were to draw that on your pig? Oh, that's now it represents potentially money or greed. There are my little drawings for you, Sylvia. Yeah. Oh, nice. So it can represent money or greed or... Economy or, or forethought, right? I'm saving some things in my piggy bank for later. Right. So that is the end of our drawing session, but I do have a few more slides I want to show everyone. So how about I get back to my slides? Sure, sure. Okay. And again, if folks have been joining us midstream, um, we'll be posting this recording live later on uh, Facebook so you can watch it at your leisure. Uh, we call it Pajama PD around here. Watch whenever you want. Sylvia has links to all of her resources, and she will be uh, more than happy to engage you on places like Twitter. Do you do much on Facebook, uh, Sylvia, or do you mostly engage people at, like on a Twitter kind of environment? Um, yeah, no, my Facebook is... is I don't, I don't have a public Facebook page. It's private, so but I'm definitely can be reached on, on Twitter and Instagram at Sylvia cool. Duckworth. And I can guarantee you guys, uh, Sylvia and I have only met maybe twice in real life. We've formed most of our professional relationship just off social media and enjoying each other's work. So if you'll reach out to her, the chances of her answering you are very good. And she loves seeing people um, taking these kinds of concepts and really doing them with human children. So here's the question I know a lot of teachers have is, how can I get my kids sketch noting, either my kids in my own family right now or my students uh, in a remote learning capacity? And I have a page on my website, uh, bit.ly slash sketchnote fever. There are 34 lessons there on how to draw uh, different icons. There are 10 icons per lesson. They're little video lessons, so they're three minutes long um, with a slide as well, and they're thematically based, so how to draw 10 icons related to food, how to draw 10 icons related to school, 10 animal icons, um, 10 uh, clothing icons, 10 icons related to spring, to summer, to fall. And so you can definitely um, have fun uh, pointing your students to that resource. Um, okay, so Sylvia, we have about one more question. Okay. Uh, all right, I have time for one more question, sorry. So here's my question for you. In yep. this environment we're in right now, thanks to this virus that none of us like very much, uh, yeah. what what would be one or two top tricks for teachers who this hit them unprepared, their kids are now at home. Mm -hmm. uh, for me as a teacher, I would be worried about just sending home stacks of packets. I know that's the case for some districts. What are a couple of quick start ideas teachers could use to engage their kids this way? Can you give us like two of the, maybe, and again, it might be just be your lessons examples that you shared, but can you give us like a quick start for teachers that watch this and said, I want to do this with my class, but my class is not going to be back till May. What are one or two quick start things? Well, you have to go to, to bit.ly sketch note fever. So it's all there. They just it's have all to there. go there and jump in. And, and everything is there. Yeah. All, That's awesome. All 30, 34 lessons. Um, I would encourage them also to check out the hashtags SketchQ and Sketchnote Fever. Okay. Um, SketchQ and Sketchnote Fever. Okay, sketch cool. Sketchnote Fever. But when when they get the link to the slide deck, they're going to get a link to this resource as well, Sketchnote okay. Resources. So there's lots of ideas there too on on teachers to follow in all of their resources. Um, you can order my book from Amazon. Uh, lots of lessons in there. Um, Jen Giffen, unfortunately, this slide, for whatever weird reason, is not showing, but she has an online course that she's in the middle of now, and um, she's going to be launching it again in the next couple of months, so there's another resource. That's awesome. I have two more sessions coming up. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Conference. We have deep so do deep dives in about a little over a week with you to go. Mm -hmm. This was kind of the taster, the the um, exactly. overview, and then we have two of these one hour sessions where we're going to deep dive. Yep. We have about five more seconds, Sylvia. Any last okay. things you want to share? I would like to share. Uh, I would like to. Um, I'd like to give out three copies of my book. So okay. if you go ahead on that form, bit.ly sketch form, and give me your name. An email address. I'll draw for prizes and announce the winners later. And there's the link to my slide deck. Leave that Without last me. slide up, James. Can Travel you freeze still. on the screen? Right. Wait for it. Back. Go back one, Sylvia, because we're going to transition oh, right now. Sure. But I want to leave that link up for people. Right there. Let's freeze. Well, we'll just leave it up. How about that? But I'm I gonna... think this. I think this link is more important because then they okay. get the link to oh, the slide deck. Oh, that gives them all of it. Yeah, it gives them okay. all of it. So let's leave that one up, James. I'm going to cut my audio in about five seconds so Pam and Crystal okay. can get started up. Sylvia, thank you so, so much for spending for some having time. Me, John. Oh, I, my heart is so full right now. It was just so fun sharing with you. And um, I am not by any means an expert on sketch noting, but if, if anybody wants to engage me on that uh, non linguistic representation kind of stuff and the thoughts on how to take notes besides just writing down what the teacher has on board, I'm totally available too. And so this is how we uh, clap silently at Schools of the Deaf. So Sylvia, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. My pleasure. We're gonna, we're gonna freeze the screen for about maybe 20, 30 seconds. And then Pam's gonna be coming up with Crystal Chavez talking about her teacher love tribe thing, which I think all of the teachers that I know right now need a little time to get recentered before we get farther into the weekend. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Sylvia, for your time. My pleasure, thanks for having me. All right.